Welcome to In It to Win It. This is Steve Barton, and thank you for tuning in. Today we are here with Keith Newmeyer, CEO of First Majestic Silver. Keith founded First Majestic in 2002 and has been an outspoken advocate for saving your wealth in the form of gold and silver. Keith, thank you very much for your time, and thank you, too, for your efforts on behalf of shareholders like myself and the viewers of this channel. Well, it's very nice meeting you as well. Yes, yes, uh, pleasure. Uh, go ahead and tell us about yourself and how you started in the business and how you started First Majestic Silver. <laughs> okay, well, it goes way back. Um, uh, I've been in the mining sector for 35 years. Uh, I started a company called First Quantum Minerals back in 1992. Uh, it, today is one of the largest copper companies in the world. Um, I left that company in 2000. Um, uh, and uh, waited for really the market uh, to, to show me the signals that uh, you know, we're going to get back into a bull market again in metals. Uh, from 97 to 2002, the mining sector was a pretty difficult place to be, a very difficult place to raise money, and uh, the equities at that time weren't doing particularly well, very similar to the stocks today, you know, where we have the high-tech uh, uh, boom in, in, on the NASDAQ and then S&P and uh, all the miners being left behind. Well, it's exactly the same as what happened from 97 to 2002. Um, I just look at it as a repeat. Uh, the Dow, or pardon me, the NASDAQ, you know, hit a peak of 5,000 in uh, January, or March of, uh, two, uh, of 2000. Um, and it went down 80% over the following three years. And uh, uh, we've seen similar action in the mining sector today. And uh, I'm looking forward to another 10-year bull market. Um, uh, when I put the company together in 2002, we had a 10-year bull market in, in metals, uh, gold, was at $240 an ounce at the time. Silver was at $5 an ounce at the time. And uh, by 2011, uh, gold had hit uh, just under $1,900, and uh, silver was just uh, just bare, barely hit $50 uh, uh, in April of 2011. Uh, since then, you know, we've had this major correction in the metals, uh, or the miners, I, I should say. And uh, the metals have now improved, but the equities are still lagging behind. And I think that's going to change over the next uh, several years. I hope so. We're literally betting on it. <laughs> yes. Um, and I'm, okay. And I'm fully invested as well. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're way more invested than that. Okay. Uh, some company basics, uh, uh, market cap, uh, debt, cash, uh, enterprise value. Yeah. Okay. Um, in U.S. terms? Uh, yeah, if you could. Sure. Okay. Um, the market cap is around $2 billion uh, U.S. Uh, we've got about 4,000 employees. Uh, spread over the operations. Uh, there's three producing uh, uh, silver gold mines in, in Mexico. Uh, we have one mine in Nevada that's not currently operating. Uh, we can talk about that a little bit later. Uh, the uh, uh, treasury is quite strong. Um, it, it combined between all our cash components and marketable securities, we're over $300 million uh, in that range. It's on, the details are on our, on our website. I would encourage people to go to our PowerPoint presentation to get the exact numbers. I'm, I'm just throwing out estimates right Ball now. Ballpark, yeah. Yeah. Um, and what was the other question? Uh, debt. Oh, uh, we, we don't really technically have any debt. Um, uh, we have a convertible debenture that's outstanding. Uh, if you're, it's convertible at uh, uh, $19 a share or something, twice, twice the current share price. Um, and it comes due in 2027. Okay. All right. Uh, so enterprise value, three and a half or so. Um, okay, and, let's and we also pay a dividend as well. Yeah, yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's uh, do an overview of your three producing mines. So we can start with San Dimas. Sure. San Dimas is um, the largest gold silver mine in the state of Durango uh, in Mexico. It's been in production for over 300 years, and um, uh, it's just an amazing mine. Uh, it's a huge land package, 70,000 hectare land package. Uh, we're spending. Uh, so over ten million dollars in exploration this year alone. Um, uh, it's it's about uh, sixty percent of our production, uh, so it's pretty significant for us. Uh, it uh, produces fifty percent gold and fifty percent silver, uh, in the form of dory bars, which is quite nice. So we actually produce metal right on site, and they get shipped off to the refinery. Uh, we don't produce concentrates, um, which is always nice for a mining company. And um, yeah, what else? Uh, Santa Elena. Okay. Uh, San Delano has been in our portfolio since 2015. Oh, by the way, we bought San Dimas in 2018 um, from another company that was almost bankrupt. Uh, but nevertheless, the um, uh, San Delano came in our portfolio in 2015. Uh, we uh, uh, bought it. We took out another public company that owned it, and it was only producing about um, well less than five million ounces a year at the time. 
Uh, it, was, it had some challenges. Um, we put the investment in, we put the people in, and we uh, modernized the facility quite substantially. Uh, today, all, it almost hit 10 million ounces production last year, hmm. very just shy of 10 million ounces. Uh, we expect it'll be around that same number this year as well. Uh, oh, by the way, Sandemus produces about 13 million ounces. I, I should have mentioned that. Uh, hey, so Sandland has a lot of upside. We're, we're drilling right now. Where we've got a news release coming out in two or three weeks uh, to, to discuss some exploration results, which we're pretty pleased with, and uh, just continually drilling and hopefully expanding that operation. High-grade gold, uh, it's uh, slightly less silver, uh, about 60% uh, gold and about 40% silver. Also, 60, 60, yeah, also in the form of dory bars as well. Okay, that's nice. Um, and Lon Cantata. Yeah, Lon Cantata is our smallest mine. It's been our portfolio since 2005. Um, we've expanded it a number of times. Uh, it, it just got through a fairly uh, um, serious challenge over the last several quarters. Um, for those of you who've been watching Lon Cantata, you see it was quite a high pr uh, cost producer over the last year. Uh, we lost one of our water wells there, um, uh, and obviously mining requires water. And uh, we lost about a third of our water supply, so we yeah. had to cut our production back by a third. And your, your, your fixed costs re remaining the same, you know, we didn't want to lay off the workforce, so we just kept producing the metal, producing silver, and uh, of course at, at uh, a substantial cost. But anyways, nevertheless, we have now hit water again. Uh, in April, we found a nice, beautiful water well. It's now being uh, developed, and so it's uh, feeding the mill. We're back up to over 3,000 tons a day uh, through uh, production. And so over the next couple of quarters, you're going to see the Lincoln Tata right, right itself and uh, look a lot better as it used to. Okay. Yeah, that one I noticed the all-in sustaining cost on uh, uh, was almost double of mm -hmm. the others. Yes, it was, yeah. Uh, boy. Okay. Yeah. Now that one's 100% silver. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then your up-and-comer... Uh, Jared Canyon. So, uh, massive deposit in Nevada, uh, 1.7 million ounces of gold um, uh, measured and indicated, inferred is about one and a half. Um, in March of 2023, it was put under care and maintenance um, due to cost overruns and inflation. And I think at the time, gold was like 1800, 1850, but it was costing north of 2000 to, to mine it. So that's not a whole lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So you put it under uh, care and maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, how is that looking now? We've had quite a run up in gold. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what's it look like as far as a timetable of restarting Jarrett Canyon? Well, first, we're, a number of things have to happen. Um, uh, we need exploration success, um, and we're spending $10 million right now. Actually, drilling starts next week, okay. uh, which is kind of nice. It's the first drilling program there since we shut it down. Okay. Uh, so we've spent the last year and a half really just defining targets. Our geological team, you know, they have a viewpoint on it, but it's got to be proven out uh, and takes time. So we're going to start put, you know, putting holes in the ground in a variety of different locations to see if their theories are, in fact, correct. Um, you know, if they are, all of a sudden, you know, we could have a second ore body there. Uh, right now, there's about three million ounces of gold to find, as you've already outlined, um, uh, but it's more or less spread around. Um, uh, so it needs a new mine plan. The pri previous owners um, were not great operators, and, and uh, that's where uh, you come in. Yeah, and and we were hoping at the time when we bought it that we could actually operate it and fix it at the same time, but a whole series of events happened simultaneously, plus a very, very bad winter. I'm not sure if you recall, you know, minus 30 degrees in northern Nevada, which was pretty, pretty crazy. And yeah. it stayed like that for six weeks, and the mill just froze up, and uh -huh. pipes were bursting, and uh, it was quite quite the phenomenal. I icicles were growing from the ceilings and the mill. Wow. Uh, it was a crazy thing. So we we, we just couldn't do both. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, in hindsight, we should have shut it down on day one okay. but but we didn't want to be that you know foreign company that comes into small town you know nevada and, and laid off 600 workers on, yeah. on the first day yeah because you know, that would have hit the newspapers it would have not looked very good for us so uh we decided not to do that okay okay all right so what uh, you're spending 10 million on drilling um what what does that equate to is that how many meters are you going to get out of that that's a good question um i don't have that number off the top of my head okay all minutes, right yeah. Okay, but you will be putting money into that, and and the mill needs to be updated, you know, upgraded, and that's going to happen over the next couple of years. You know, we don't want another weather event causing the same issues that you know happened last winter. So yeah. uh, the whole mill needs to be sealed up and winterized. Okay, okay, and um, Mexico, 
Uh, so we got some listener questions on Mexico. It's really tough to mine uh, for silver without going to Mexico. Uh, you're yeah. probably <clears throat> one of the world's uh, experts on mining in Mexico. <clears throat> what any updates with the uh, new president, with uh, new legislation, taxes? What what can you tell us about Mexico? Well, there's a lot of rhetoric going on right now. Mm -hmm. um, they they just had elections on on June second and. Uh, the same party won, uh, okay. which was expected. Um, the, the the lady that's taking over, being becoming the first female president of the country, which is interesting in an environment like that, yeah. um, very macho, you know, male male orientated uh, uh, environment. Uh, it'll be quite interesting to, to watch her and see how she evolves. And um, you know, we're optimistic. You know, we've heard we've had good things. We've had and we've heard some not so good things. So um, you know, we're hoping that she's going to come in, change the guard. Uh, they changed the ministers out, and, and uh, she's rumored to be more business-like okay. than the current uh, uh, president. Uh, but we haven't seen any proof of that yet. Okay. We're, we're waiting for this all to happen. So the transition is, uh, is happening in October. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to keep working away. I mean, you know, we've been in Mexico for 20 years, and we just celebrated our 20th year anniversary last September. Uh, so we're all in when it comes to Mexico, and, and we are one of the biggest players there. And, and uh we take our responsibilities uh, pretty seriously, but um, you know it is a it is a relationship with the government that you need to always yeah. have in place because you're always asking them for permits. You're always needing their assistance in some way, shape, or form. So it's very important to have good relationship relationships with the government for sure. And a lot of these regulations were on open pit, right? That's right. And mm -hmm. you guys are all underground. Underground. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, and uh, listener questions. You have a bullion store, so mm -hmm. this is uh, one thing that I got to see some of your bullion out on the floor there. Pretty right. cool. Mm -hmm. um, uh, tell us about that. Yeah, we've been selling retail products uh, through our e-commerce website um, uh, uh, since 2008, uh, and, and uh, it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger over time. And uh, over the last couple of years, what I noticed was the mints refused to give us more metal. So we, we, we would send them our, our, our silver from the refinery, and it would sit on their floor for months and months and months. So we would wait four to six months for a product to get turned around. Yeah. And, and our inventories are building and building and building because we kept, you know, keep shipping the metal, you know, produce it, produce this for it, and they just refused. They, and so mm. they, were, they were just at limits, whether they did it on purpose because they didn't want us to be competition to them or whether they just simply don't, didn't have the capacity to, to manage what our demand was. Because we noticed our demand was much higher than what we could actually get produced by the mints that we were using. So we decided you know, to look into um, uh, opening our own, own mint. And uh, we looked around and uh, we chose Las Vegas because it's a similar time zone as, as what, what we're currently uh, working in. And uh, a big workforce, a growing community, a, a great international airport. So transportation is very good. Um, and, and we sourced all the equipment out of Europe, and uh, it's now pumping away. So it's, it's as you saw on the booth, the products. We'll be expanding the products. Right now we're just doing uh, bars. We're doing kilo bars, 10-ounce bars, and then 5-ounce bars. Mm -hmm. But we will be doing uh, coins and, and custom products as well. That's pretty cool. And yeah. this is silver that's coming from your mine. mine. Yes, that's what I like. Comes about. from Sindemus. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and let's see answered red question nautica wants to know any updates on adding silver to the list of critical minerals in canada and the u.s yeah unfortunately um, um it did not get put on the canadian list okay um they just published their list i think uh, a month ago uh, we were pushing pretty hard um you know there's a lot of politics involved and, yeah. and uh, we didn't really because uh, for us you know, we look at silver and we see that it's it's in a deficit. Yeah. You know, we see the, the governments of Canada and the United States pushing, you know, green technologies and, and uh, it which requires silver. Uh, you, you know, even a nuclear power plant requires a ton of silver. You know, people don't think that. So I as didn't a, know as that. A, yeah, as the nuclear age seems to be evolving now, you know, we're going to need a bunch of silver there. So uh, whether it's electrical cars, solar panels, electronics, uh, you name it, silver is required in all these different uh, components. and. Uh, it is a little bit shocking that the government isn't aware of, of the needs of silver, and we, you know, we're our office, uh, led, led by you know our, um, a girl that runs the ESQ department, uh, is working with the government, has met with the ministers many times, and is in education mode. 
So for the next two years, Jesus can educate the heck out of these people yeah. and hopefully win them over. Okay. Um, uh, the United States uh, will be pr uh, apparently publishing the, their list in 2025. Okay. So we're working with them as well. Okay. All right. And um, any new areas that you're looking at, um, looking to acquire other, you know, whatever, whatever you can talk about, uh, you, any new projects online that you're looking at, or are you just focusing right now on the ones you got? Well, we have small investments in junior mining companies that uh, you know we, we assist along the way, and uh, I don't mind doing that on occasion. It's not a huge amount of our portfolio, but uh, it is some. It g gives us an opportunity to be, keep our eye on some of the technical developments that are going on in the junior space, because you never know. You know, there could be a major discovery, and all of a sudden it, it gets moved from a simple investment to then a target. Yeah. And uh, that would be nice if that would happen, of yeah. course. Um, when it comes to targets, uh, you know, we have a whole list of, of companies and many names that you're probably familiar with, which I can't say, yeah. but, um, you know, we have a team of people that, you know, just analyze, you know, other companies constantly. So we have a database and we're always looking. You're in the business of consuming your own capital, so you always got to be on the lookout for new, new projects. My, mines are depleting assets. The, you know, the metal disappears. Yeah. So eventually it's gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, tailwinds. Uh, what uh, what about any headwinds? What uh, what could go wrong? What are your biggest challenges going forward from here? Well, I, you know the verdict is out in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, you know it is a concern. Um, uh, you know over the last couple of years, you know some of the rhetoric that's come out of you know Amlo's mouth, the president's mouth, has yeah. not been particularly helpful. Um, they they have not been successful in changing any laws, um, which, which is great. Yeah. So so they don't have the majority. Uh, that they need to, ch you know, to change the constitution. We're hoping that's not going to be the case in the upcoming administration as well. We don't think it's going to be, so we don't expect any major uh, changes there. But uh, you know, it is a bit of a wait and see. You know, you want to see the whole government turn over. You know, all the ministers uh, get replaced, and who's coming in those different seats, and and you know, and so on. We have to rebuild relationships uh, with, with the Mexican government. So that's one of the biggest things. Okay. Um, you know, silver price, you know, is always a concern, but at, you know, we're at thirty-one dollars silver right now, so yeah, you can't complain about that. Pretty and, nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, so we're you know we're selling silver at the current metal prices, you know, which is which is obviously good. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully, you know, we see uh, much higher prices. I am still a bull on silver. I'm I'm known as a triple-digit silver guy. Mm -hmm. um, I coined that phrase over a decade ago, and uh, I I honestly believe it, and I think it will happen. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> the way our government is going, how could it not? Mm -hmm. um, okay, any um, uh, final thoughts? Uh, anything else you want to leave us with? No, you know, just to get a hold of. The yeah, just watch for you know developments, um, you know, expiration results. Uh, we just put some out the other week on uh, uh, San, San Dimas. We'll be putting some out on Santa Elena, and there'll be other updates. Uh, and and for those who want to get a hold of us, you know, please go to our website. You know, get sign sign in in our info at um, um, uh, segment of the website so you can get news releases and other tidbits of information um, as things develop. Now you can follow me on Twitter, uh, Keith underscore Neumeyer. Um, you know, I don't do a lot on Twitter, but you know, every now and then I send out the odd tweet. Okay, there'll be a link down in the show notes. Keith, thank you very much for coming yep. on the show. It's a real pleasure. Yep, thank you. And thank you for tuning in. Support the show and share this with anyone that you think needs to hear it. It's probably your buddy that can't stop talking about tech stocks. You have yourself a great rest of the day, and we will talk to you next time.